Today in the shop, we received an NEC Turbo Express. This one was in pretty rough shape and it had failed completely. There was no video, there was no audio, there was no signs of life. Now, the Turbo Express, like a lot of the other 90s, early 90s machines, had problems with the ele electrolytic capacitors leaking and causing issues on the board. Now this one had already been recapped, but the work done wasn't top quality and some of the save attempts were questionable. We were able to bring it back to life, but it was under some very extreme measures. So stick around and you'll see what we had to do. On the bench today, we have a Turbo Express. These were a handheld system made by NEC um, in the very early 90s, or maybe even released in 98. I would have to double check. But they're fairly unknown. Um, NEC didn't get a very strong hold in the United States, as uh, a lot of you gamers would know, and Nintendo and Atari. Uh, at the time, ruled the world. Um, this one came to us in bad shape. Um, these, uh, just like the uh, Sega Game Gears and Nomads and a few of the others, suffer from bad capacitors. Um, basically, all the electrolytic capacitors on the board will leak. That material that comes out of them is corrosive. It causes board damage. Um, some of them that weren't played very much, you know, they, they can be saved relatively easy. Um, now this one represents a bit of a problem uh, that I normally don't like to tackle, but because this is an odd system, a rare system, um, I told the owner that we would definitely try our best. Um, the main problem is that this system was already worked on. The capacitors had been changed. I, I won't comment on, on the prior work because the old capacitors can damage the board. So although there are pulled up traces uh, and there's obvious uh, repair around these capacitors um, because of probably broken traces, I, I can't say if it was bad workmanship or if it was simply just because of acid erosion and sometimes you've got to do what you got to do to get these old systems to work again. Now this one is in extremely nice shape cosmetically. Um, a lot of times, you know, these are pulled out of people's closets. The battery compartments are, are beat up from leaking batteries and you know, dogs have chewed on them and they get thrown around. But it's not the case on this one. So we want to try to salvage this at, at all costs. Um, not to mention the going, <laughs> the going price for these things at the moment is about $400. Um, so it's definitely worth the time and the effort to, to look into this. So I told the owner there's a few options we can look at. <clears throat> One is we already have some ideas of what's wrong. Um, but the one idea that I have come up with and the owner actually likes, it's a bit extreme. We know that there are some serious problems with this board, whether there's a short or breaks inside the traces. We haven't been able to pinpoint that. Um, one of the big problems is the mask on these NEC boards was so thick, it's very hard to see through. Um, so it's hard to tell what does what. Um, I'm sure there's people out there uh, that have done enough work on these that knows the insides and out on these boards. But um, for the majority of us, we don't. We do know, the nice thing about these is this is basically a TurboGrafx-16 just put on a small package. Um, 
so we got this we have the schematics for the turbo graphics we know what these chips do we have the pinouts we have the pinouts for cartridges but what we don't have is full understanding of the 5 volt rail system and the 29 volt rail system um, so this this side of the board is basically for the voltage for the LCD back screen this section along with the Zener, a few capacitors, and this adjustment is for the 5-volt system. So I've already taken a look at this board um, since you know it was already a part. And we know that we've got no 5 volts, and we're only showing about 2 volts or 3 volts on the high voltage side or the, the higher voltage side. Um, I've come in with a uh, ESR meter and I've checked all these caps. I've replaced one, but all of them check out. Uh, an ESR meter is uh, a meter that can check the resistance of a, a electrolytic capacitor while it's still on the board. Um, so, you know, we've checked a lot of things. Um, I've consulted a few other people already about the 5 volt system and why it may or may not be working. And it has actually stumped a lot of other technicians um, because it should it just shouldn't be this difficult to rebuild this 5 volt system the problem is the main problem is, is some of these extremely small surface mount parts we don't know exactly what they are because we don't have the schematics um, there's a possibility that uh, the component marked D500, which is a diode, could be bad because we don't, here again, it checks with a meter, but we don't have the exact forward and breakdown and all that kind of stuff. This Q503, which is tied to the five volt side, could be bad. Um, it's been suggested that Q500 has gone bad and also Q900 and 901, which are common failure points for this uh, LC, the original LCD screen could have gone bad. All these parts I have removed from the board, checked individually, and put back on the board. And all of them seem to be fine. One question I haven't been able to answer is the output of this larger transistor is, should be our 5 volts. And that feeds the memory chips and our logic chips. But on this particular board, there's high resistance between the 5 volt rail or the, or the 5 volt output and the 5 volt rail. So I'm unsure if that's correct or not. On the TurboGrafx 16 schematic, it shows a direct connection. Um, there would be there's nothing in between. There's no diodes. There's no resistance. So this at the output of the 5 volt system in the TurboGrafx would feed these chips directly. So what, we, what I'm going to do, and this is going to be extreme, we know that the LCD is not functioning. We know that the 5 volt system is not functioning. So what we need to know are, are these logic chips and memory chips still functioning? Um, using a TurboGrafx-16 schematic, we know many of these capacitors are directly on the power rail. <clears throat> and uh, our first thing what we're going to do is we're going to remove a few of the components from the board. Um, this jumper actually will dis disable the, um, the LCD driver. And if we remove this uh, larger transistor, we can kind of cripple the 5 volt side permanently um, so there's no back feed. And then what we'll do is we will solder a pair of leads to one of these capacitors. We will hook back into our, our controls and our speaker. We'll leave the LCD off and we'll see if we can get a game to at least boot and to make some noise. If we can, then the um, way we'll proceed is we will just 
add a second five volt regulator system. We'll, we'll basically just remove this whole system from the, from the circuit board and we'll put on a newer one, which should actually be a little bit more efficient. Um, and then what we will do is an LCD mod because the owner of this board has already asked for the possibility of a newer modern screen. Uh, this one is a two and a half inch screen. The replacement screens are three and a half and I happen to have one right here. So we'll take a few steps. We'll see what we can do and, and hopefully we can resurrect this system. Um, it would be absolutely great and the owner would be ecstatic. Um, so the first things first, um, we got our hot air station on where we got it set to 400. So let's go ahead and get this, this transistor off the board. <clears throat> you always want to let these come up to temp before trying to do anything. You want the heat stable. Almost up. Okay, we're up full temp. Uh, let's move our cartridge. The next thing we want to do is take this solder point off. I probably need some wick. The one thing you'll notice if you wind up working on these old boards even though this board's been cleaned, I can still get a smell of the acid removing some of these components. And I can actually see some residue underneath. So while we're here, we might as well clean it. All right, so we've, we've crippled our five volt side and we've crippled our 29 volt side. So we just wanna verify uh, we'll use a meter on continuity and okay, so we already know that let's see pin 28 on this memory chip should be a 5 volt rail So let's go ahead and go from here to a positive side on a cap and it is So let's find another ground Okay, we got it. Okay. So, okay, so we know the video grounds are a separate system, but our uh, power ground, we know we've got power here and here. We've also got power here and here. Okay, we uh, ran into a few complications that, um, that I wasn't expecting. Um, after I tried to Put power using the bench supply it was showing that i was pulling about a watt and a half or about a quarter of an amp um, and we weren't getting any response out of any of the the chips so i dug into it and we did find or i did find a short and i wound up taking a couple more components off the board um, along with the the regulator um, I removed the zener out of the regulator circuit and another transistor that I believe, although it, it's marked 500, which should be on the, the five volt rail, I believe that it actually is part of the, the uh, back screen. So once it was removed, I was able to get things going again. And the part that we kind of missed is 
the addition of a new 5 volt regulator. Um, this is just a small buck regulator, um, very efficient design, and it's adjustable. So I set it for 5 volts um, from our standard supply, actually using the bench supply. And it will continue to supply five volts anywhere from about five and a half volts on the supply up to uh, almost 10 volts before it starts fluctuating, which is fine because on, even on dry cells, we're only looking at a nine volt um, input. Um, so what I did is I hooked the ground into our standard ground bus, which is the shielding and everything else that would have come off of this uh, board. Um, but it was already off before we started working on it. The input supply is from where our regulator came off the board. Um, so this still gives us a, our switched power. And then the output comes through a via and is soldered to pin 28 on this memory, which feeds the five volt bus to the entire board. With that in place, I was able to get sound and to get everything functioning. So where that leaves us is to work on our new video output. So the, the new video outboard, the com uh, component outboard, as you can see, it's very small and it's gonna be soldered uh, to a few of the pins here on the 6260 chip, uh, which is one of the controller chips uh, in the system. <clears throat> but one of the things we have to do is lift the grounds. So there's a few methods of doing that. We could use the hot air station to obviously heat the part of the chip, lift the pins. Um, but what I like to do when we're dealing with this small surface mount uh, equipment or these ICs is if you hit it with a little bit of desoldering braid first, you can pull the majority of the, of the solder away from our pins. And if we make an extremely small hook with something like 30 gauge wire, we can hook behind the leg we want, just heat it with the tip of soldering iron and we can lift it off the board. Um, this mod requires the grounds on the video side to be lifted um, off the main board. And then this will be double-sided tape right down to the top of that chip. Um, I know some people will cut the legs. I really don't condone doing that. Um, because it, it makes it that much harder to go back if you need to. If we lift the legs, we can tie the grounds together. And uh, if we ever want to reverse, we can. Um, especially if the schematic comes out for this and we can properly solve the uh, supply voltage issues. Um, so with that said, we can uh, work on putting this board on. And we'll do just that in the next video. Unfortunately, working on this NEC Turbo Express, I put a lot more time and effort than I was originally expecting to have to put out. And because of that, there was a lot of video recorded. So there's gonna be a bit of editing involved. So if you're enjoying the video thus far, please join us for the next video. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks.